if you become the president of Gambia one day, what are you going to do to change the face of Gambia and Africa as a whole? Is to make Gambians believe in themselves, to harness Gambia's resources, to generate the wealth needed that will be invested in the Gambian people, to ensure that every Gambian, every Gambian, no matter where you are born in the Gambia, no matter your ability, no matter your gender, no matter your age, no matter your ethnicity, no matter the region you are from, whether rural or urban, you have access to the most basic things in life, Oscar. Access to basic, relevant, and quality education so that you can grow up to become can, the kind of person you want to be. You can be successful wherever you are. So that your potential is developed to the fullest. If your God-given potentials are football, you become a very good football star. If your God-given potentials are a pilot, you become a very good pilot. Whatever you want to do, you can be good at it through that education system. So that every government has access to quality healthcare, uh, obviously. So that whenever you are sick, you can go and get cured. Uh, so that every government has access, obviously, um, to the infrastructure that is needed to connect our communities. Access to clean water, access to affordable electricity, uh, access to good roads. This is what we need, Oscar, in Africa. We need to really look at look inwards. Now it's time for us to look inwards, Oscar. For far too long, they've been telling us that the solutions for developmental problems are found outside. Um, that is not the case anymore, Oscar. The solutions are from within. We have the resources. Gambia is one of the richest countries on earth. Sometimes I say that, even though some might this this can be a contested uh, issue. Some feel we are we are not poor. Um, we have the resources that we can tap and look, build the wealth we need, create the systems and institutions that is needed to create the wealth that is needed to invest in our people. Our people must live a dignified life, Oscar. Our people cannot be living in abject poverty anymore. Gone are the days in the Gambia when wealth disparities will be accepted, when inequalities will be accepted, whether it is rural, urban, or gender. We want to ensure that every child, no matter where you're born, you become successful in what you want to be. It is unfair for a child born in urban Gambia to be successful because they want to become a pilot and they become a pilot. And a child born in rural Gambia cannot become a pilot because he or she, that is her dream. Every Gambian child must fulfill her, his or her dream, whatever that dream is. It is the responsibility of the Gambian state to ensure we build the systems and the processes and the right environment and the right policies in place to ensure that every government fulfills their dream. If you want to be a farmer, you become a successful farmer. If you want to be a carpenter, a successful carpenter. That is what we want, Oscar, so that the Gambia can become a country where our young men and women will not make the decision anymore to say that they'd rather die at sea than live in the Gambia. I think that is unfortunate, and I think this is one of the things that we'll fight. We'll invest in people. Invest in infrastructure. Today, the infrastructural deficit, not only in Gambia, but in the whole entire African continent, is alarming. Over one third of our population in Africa, almost 600 million people, don't have access to electricity. Africa will need almost $100 billion every year to invest in infrastructure, to close that gap, that deficit gap, to close it. And half of this should go into power and energy. Most African countries are not light. Uh, they don't have light by at night. Most people don't have access to clean water. And this is unfortunate, Oscar. 60 years of flag independence, of all the goodwill, of all the resources, of all that has been said and done, yet our people live in abject poverty. Not even the most basic service, not even the most basic, they cannot have access to it. They die of preventable diseases, diseases that can be cured in Europe, you die in a hospital in Africa because there is no medication, because there is no, there are no materials. There is a good doctor who wants to cure, but lacks the resources to cure. And it is painful, Oscar, to be a doctor in a hospital. Someone dies in your hands. You know, with the right resources, you can cure that person. That person dies because you don't have the resources. Why? Because. Some politician decided to steal that money and spend it on himself and his family and to stay and, and to stack it away in foreign banks. 
that has to stop oscar we need to use our resources and invest it in our people because it belongs to them it is there and that is the way going forward for every politician it is time for us to go away from enriching ourselves from self-enrichment to ensure we are empathetic to the situation of people and use our resources and equitably distribute it to our population so that everybody everybody every african can live a very dignified life at the most basic health education infrastructure clean water electricity these are basic oscar that every african must have the rest can follow at some point wow this this is quite interesting and, and i can say you are a presidential material you just need to work harder my brother thank you yes and um these are the kind of minds we need on the continent. There have to be a revolution of a new generation. For how long can we continue this way? That, is, that has always been my question. For how long can we continue this way? There has to be a revolution. And, and the young people on the continent should be discerning. They should look at the long term and not the short term. They should vote for the right people. Not because somebody gives you $1 today and because of that you vote for them. Just vote for them because of policies and their abilities. And I think if we can do that, we can really, really change the face of the continent, isn't it? Of course. The potential is there, Oscar. It's just to believe in ourselves, to work harder, with discipline and sacrifice. You see, one generation has to sacrifice, Oscar. Just like in a family. One generation in a family has to sacrifice so the next generation can live a better life. Mm. Sacrifice to pay for education. Sacrifice to invest in, in our children so they can break that cycle of poverty and dependence. And that is the state at which we are. This generation, our generation, must sacrifice and work harder to ensure that the next generation don't live the kind of, uh, the kind of life that we've, left, what, that we've lived in the African continent. Poverty, violence, uh, marginalization, you name it. The next generation doesn't deserve that. We cannot afford to abdicate our responsibilities and pass it on to the next generation to do it. We have to do it for them. So when they come, they can live in a continent where they can be respected, they can live in dignity, and have access to all the basics of life that their counterparts are having in Asia and in Europe. So they don't have to go to Asia and Europe to survive and to succeed. Africa has huge potential, Oscar especially Gambia, our young people. When was the last time we really make, made a breakthrough? Mm. It pains me with this COVID-19. What are our African scientists? <laughs> what are they saying about COVID-19 in Africa? Why should we just rely on Western scientists to tell us exactly uh, uh, what's happening? We have to believe in ourselves. I think we have it. I mean, the diaspora has a key role to play. There's a lot of brain drain that has happened in the continent over the past year. Most of our experts and our professionals are living in Europe and America. We have to attract them to come back home to build the Africa we want. They are indispensable in the journey to greatness for the African continent. It's everybody's role. And I thank you. You are doing a wonderful job by enlightening the people, uh, by making sure that uh, you expose talent, and by making sure that you bring in and talk about those very important issues that affect our continent. So I thank you very much. Uh, the future is bright. I'm hopeful. I'm an Afro-pessimist. I believe that um, with the right mindset, with the right ideas, with a change of attitude, we can be able to build a continent that will be the envy of the rest of the world. Mm -hmm.